Today on the channel, I unbox the newest G.I. Joe Classified Series figures. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Kyle here once again with another unboxing and not just any unboxing. I get so excited about these unboxings every time we get to do them and it's the G.I. Joe Classified series. I say it all the time, G.I. Joe is my first love in the action figure game. So excited to have this line back. Uh, so fun with these new figures. Uh, a few issues, a few missteps uh, that we'd probably all agree on but uh, just so fun to have G.I. Joe's back in our life in a consistent basis, uh, especially at the 6-inch scale. Uh, the sad thing about this is this seems to be the last hurrah for 2020 for G.I. Joe. Uh, these, I think, were originally going to be out around November. They came out early. Um, I actually got the majority of these through Amazon. We'll talk about them as I go through. But uh, it looks like the rest of 2020 is over for G.I. Joe's. We'll see some of these guys refilling and stocking the shelves, but... Uh, unless something changes outside of the Hasbro Pulse Cobra Commander exclusive the end of September, this is it for G.I. Joe's in 2020. Uh, I cannot wait to see what 2021 brings. Uh, depending when you're watching this video, the end of September 2020, there's going to be a Hasbro Con online convention. I do expect a lot of announcements, or at least I hope for some announcements of what's to come with the G.I. Joe line. What are we going to get next? Uh, we also uh, have heard some early rumored lineups, but nothing 100% confirmed for 2021. But like I did say, we'll at least get that Hasbro uh, online convention exclusive Cobra Commander. And speaking of Cobra Commander, let's open up this new Cobra Commander. Finally, you know, the main villain in G.I. Joe is Cobra Commander. Uh, we get him in the second series, I guess you would call this, second round. Uh, it's a little weird with the boxing and the numbering of uh, these and the way they've been released and coming out. But anyways, kind of surprised we didn't get a Cobra Commander right off the jump as he is the main bad guy. Uh, they saved him for Series 2. We got Destro in Series 1. I think it would have been smart to flip those two, but I like that Destro figure, so I have no complaints on it. I'm glad we got it. Uh, but Cobra Commander, everybody knows Cobra Commander. Um, there he is. Look at that. The dark blue Cobra Commander. I should take a step back. We will be getting later on this year a repainted version of this in the more traditional Cobra blue, the regal blue. Uh, you know, So three Cobra Commanders at the end of this year uh, getting basically all repaints, unfortunately. But still cool nonetheless. Any Joe is better than no Joe, if you ask me. But uh, there he is. Comes with a sword, his gun, extra set of hands. Uh, very cool. I believe this is the first G.I. Joe figure to come with an extra set of hands as well so far. So I think that's a peak of something we'll get in the future. You Star Wars Black Series collectors, I, I think it's a similar thing. We don't get a lot of hands with that set like we do with the Mattels and, and a few other things. But we did get an extra set of hands there. Uh, you can see uh, on the bottom of the card, number six. He's number six in the lineup. All these Joes have a number to them. There is the new modern day file card system. I've talked about that before. I am not a fan of that. Uh, you got to go online and decode what Cobra Commander's up to. Uh, there's the top. It's number six, a little clear window, the Cobra logo, the bottom, all the legal stuff. Don't put this in your mouth. Don't swallow the, the hands, you name it. There's Cobra Commander on the side. Uh, some early feedback and maybe some of my feedback for this Cobra Commander, just based on what I've seen in this packaging. I like this Cobra Commander. This is kind of a later day Cobra Commander, way down at the end of the you know early 90s G.I. Joe run. Uh, once again, a bit of a misstep, I think, um, with Hasbro with this G.I. Joe line. I think people wanted to see the hooded cowled Cobra Commander or the traditional Cobra Commander. This is kind of an updated play on that late 90s maybe, or not late 90s, early 90s Cobra Commander with some of the uh, aesthetics from that. Uh, I get what they're doing. My best bet, I don't know anything, I don't have any inside knowledge, unless Hasbro wants to give me some, I'll take it via email, or follow me on Twitter at SirPaul64. <laughs> but uh, I I do think uh, there's going to be a retro line. I think there's too much money on the table for this line. I think a retro card back, six-inch figures, the traditional uh, you know, Cobra Commander, Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes, Gung Ho, Duke, you name it. I think we will get that one day. I don't know when, but I do think. I think there's just too much money on the table. There's too many people that are pining for that, myself included. I don't know. I'll lose my mind when that set comes out. It would be awesome. But we're talking about this Cobra Commander. Uh, the back of these, 
This is the same backing we've seen before. It's that cool artwork poster. Uh, I've complained about it a little bit before. I wish there was a little bit more, a little bio, a little story. I get they got that New Day file card, but give us something. Just say, hey, Cobra Commander, leader of the ruthless terrorist organization Cobra, something like that. Put something on there instead of just the same packaging for all of them. Um, but it is what it is at this point. But let's open this bad boy up. The excitement is real. I'm happy to have Cobra Commander. You guys have seen these before as well. First off, we'll see you later. There it is. Look at that. I love that Cobra background. Just the coolest thing. That Cobra logo. Hey, I got it on my shirt. I'm a, I'm a total mark for Cobra today. I'm wearing a, a G.I. Joe shirt, doing a G.I. Joe unboxing. That's a whole new level of nerdum, but I wear it on my sleeve with the G.I. Joe. It has uh, been a part of my life since I was three, four years old. Uh, I've watched the cartoons a bazillion times. Still to this day, I can watch them. Uh, there it is. Look at that. I've also read the comic books. There is Cobra Commander in the Plastic Prison. I love this one. I love the extra hands, especially this pointer finger hand. I cannot wait to put that in there. All kinds of cool stuff we can do with him. But let's bust him out first. Let's get these hands out of here. Hopefully they don't go flying off the table. We know that happens from time to time. Oh. See you later. Oh my goodness. Look at this Cobra Commander. I love it. I absolutely love it. This, this is, I've said it before, I'm pretty sure this is my line of the year of 2020. Uh, just unbelievable. It's so cool to have modern uh, Joes in the 6-inch scale. Uh, I mean, geez. And you guys know I'm buying these, uh, keep a set in the package and a set to open up. So I will have two sets of these. But look at that Cobra Commander. I love it. I I love this Cobra Commander. I'm glad we got this. Would I have loved to have seen the hooded cowled version first? Of course I would. But I am totally fine with this. This is very cool. Look at this snake. Snake like sword uh, fits on him. He's got a little handle grip on the side. Very cool. Very cool. And then this gun. Way too fancy of a gun with uh, some cool graphics on it. I don't know if it will pick up totally great. But a cool gun. And then of course the hands. We got a fist hand and we got a pointing finger hand. This has to be this pointing finger. Just seeing him do something like that. That is an absolute no brainer. Uh, let's make sure this fits. And we've had a few quality control issues with Joe's. Not terrible, but not perfect either. Uh, this seems to fit perfectly. The sword right there on his side fits. Uh, you know, that was my uh, issue with that Snake Eyes. That was the first one I think I unboxed with Snake Eyes. And his sword or his knife did not fit in his holster. It was too big. That was very, very disappointing. Um, I'm not sure if I'll display him with this gun. This gun doesn't really make a lot of sense for Cobra Commander. I don't remember that in the past. Uh, I think the sword and maybe the finger pointing fist is the way to go with this Cobra Commander. But I love the colors. I love this uh, cape that's added to him. It's not soft goods, which I believe the new uh, Hasbro Pulse one will get the soft goods cape with some wiring in it to pose. This is a plastic cape, which definitely works. Wraps around his chest and his waist. Uh, all the articulation you see on your Hasbro figures, your Star Wars, your Power Rangers and so forth is here. Some great color designs. I love the extra attention to detail with the Cobra with the uh, red on it there. You got the red stripes on the side, the red on the inside of the cape, and the black on the outside. Uh, the silver uh, up here on the top of the cape. I mean, this is a slam dunk figure. Of course, he has the hole in his back. If you can pick that up, all G.I. Joes do. Uh, this figure is not in need of that. But, hey, if you want to play with your stuff and use something from somebody different, you can. The plug-and-play aspect, just all around slam dunk. Let's see. Does it uh, fit on the ringside collectible stand? That's the uh, million-dollar question. Uh-oh. Doesn't look like it's going to work. Doesn't look like it's going to work on this one. In Traditional with Hasbro, Power Rangers, Star Wars, you name it, there's always one figure in the line that doesn't work with. That uh, just seems to always be the case. And it looks like this uh, Cobra Commander is not going to fit on a ringside stand. Um, hopefully he'll be able to stand up uh, once I pose him right. Just yeah, no issue standing him up. You don't really even need a stand. I like it just for the extra support, of course. But there it is. There is Cobra Commander. We've talked a little bit about him. The other ones will go a little faster. But very excited to have Cobra Commander. This is a slam dunk must-have. He's shipping three to a case, so I do think he'll be fairly easy to find out there. Uh, even if you're a, a just a modern G.I. Joe or a, a, just a small-time G.I. Joe collector, this is a must-have. Kind of like Skeletor with He-Man. 
Uh, you've got to have a Cobra Commander in your uh, set and your collection, that's for sure. But let's move on to the next one. All right, next up in the G.I. Joe Classified Series, we got the seventh figure in the line, and that is Gung Ho. Another staple of the Joe days. Everybody loves Gung Ho, the extra muscle in those early episodes. Uh, I don't know anybody that didn't really like Gung Ho. He was a very likable character. Uh, very cool, of course. Had a good look to him. A cool uh, Louisiana Bayou type accent. Uh, Gung Ho was a favorite of mine. Not quite to the flint levels of my love of G.I. Joe, but I liked Gung Ho. I expected... I respected his part of the team and what he added to that Joe team. That is for sure. But there is Gung Ho. Look at that. Looks like a young Chuck Liddell. I don't know. We'll see what this one looks like when we get him open here. But a lot of accessories, as you can see. Uh, the little cartoony uh, marine-type look down here by my hand. The G.I. Joe logo below, of course. The blue packaging, which uh, separates the good from the red being the bad. There's his file card system. We know he's number seven in the line. And then on the other side, we got an interesting one. The uh, front wraps around. So you can see that there. And then you got a picture of him up here telling the guys to hold up. Uh, and there you got number seven on the top. This typical. Nobody cares about that bottom stuff. Uh, and then the back. I say it in all of them. I wish there was a little bit more something to this back. I love the picture, but shrink that picture a little bit more. Put something with us. Something in there. Um, but there it is. So let's open this guy up. Let's see what we got with Gung Ho. Like I said, an early favorite. You got the blue background. We'll show this one in here if I can get it out. But first, we must say, see you later. There it is. The modern day G.I. Joe logo, I guess you would call it. Um, to me, I guess this is a way to modernize G.I. Joe, bring it to the, to the future. I would love to see the traditional G.I. Joe logo as this, but that's me. Probably a lot of people... Uh, Younger guys than me or older people than me could care less. It is what it is. See you later. Oh, boy. Here we go. Gung Ho is a big figure. He's a big one. He's a big hulking guy, of course, as we all know. So there he is in his plastic. Comes with his backpack. We got one gun. We got two guns. We got three guns. He is a heavy gunner, of course. Free him here. Oh, hat stuck in. See you later. We'll do it without the hat first. Let's take a peek here. Let's get him all where we want it. We're tight joints, I believe. Playing with him here a little bit. Looking like Chuck Liddell, that is for sure. There is Gung Ho. Look at that. Uh, a reimagining of Gung Ho, an updated Gung Ho. First thing I noticed on the prototypes, first thing I noticed in here, look at that chest. There's his tattoo. That is not the tattoo we know and love for Gung Ho. We know Gung Ho had the big marine globe, uh, covered way more of his chest than this. I had heard things, I don't know if it's confirmed or not, but there was uh, licensing issues you know, with the Marines and all that stuff. That's why they had to go to this modern design. It works because this is an updated design, but you know, the old school fan of me, I want that blue tattoo. Uh, I'd love to see that uh, some way on there, but... It is what it is. We'll take it. It's a, it's a bit of a nitpick because this is an updated line. Um, this isn't even going to hone as traditional colors. So we might get a repaint in traditional colors down the line. I hope not. I'd like to see an old school Gung Ho, but we'll see. Time will tell with that one. But look at him a little bit more here. You can see he's got his forearm silver protector there. He's got his brown gloves. He's got grenades up here. They do not come off, but a, a nice look with those grenades. Got a holster with some missiles and stuff back here. The hole in the back for his backpack, which we'll get to, of course. All the traditional articulation. Got a, an elbow pad here, much like a wrestling elbow pad. Gung Ho's ready to throw down. Uh, we also got that communicator system up here that most of the Joes have come with. I think actually all of them maybe except Snake Eyes. Uh, don't quote me, but I think that's uh, going to be part of the thing, their Joe communicator. Um, this is also shares the same body as Roadblock, obviously. Uh, some changes, but for the most part, this is the Roadblock body uh, put on him. Here is the hat he comes with, uh, kind of the marine cap. Uh, let's see if I can get that on. I've heard some people complain it sits high on his head and falls off. It seems to be doing that to me right now. I've heard you push down and it'll stay. So there you go. I pushed it down and it looks like it's going to stay. We all know Gung Ho with a hat. You can't have him without a hat. But it's cool that they gave him the Chuck Liddell type mohawk, kind of updating him a little bit. Uh, the backpack, of course, he comes with. And then you got the hole in the back to put the uh, backpack in. Traditional to all the Joes. 
Uh, it's one of the coolest things and one of the most uh, things people remember back in the day about G.I. Joes was that hole in the back. Uh, the cool thing is with the Joes, too, they can hold all their weapons, can be held on the figure, which I think is really cool. Uh, you don't. You have all these accessories. That's one thing with G.I. Joes back in the day. You had all these accessories. They could very easily be lost. Uh, if I can get them in here, though, that's the question. Can I? Let's see. Let's see here. Will you stay? It probably takes a little bit of playing with, I'm sure, like everything else. you got to line it up just right. I'm doing this on the fly, guys. Here we go. Stick. Oops. And come on. Now I got it to stay on the other side, so it's got to stay on this one. And then, yeah, even the bottom. So you can have him holding none of his guns. They can all stick in there. Right, like so. They all fit there in the backpack. Very, very cool. He's ready. He's bulked up. He's got three sets of guns with him. That's a, a heavy gunner figure if there ever was one. So there is Gung Ho. Well, I'll, I'll display him with some guns in his hand. At least one. You have to. He's Gung Ho. But a very, very solid figure once again. They're knocking it out of the park with these. I love this Gung Ho figure. Um, so there it is. There's Gung Ho. Let's see. Will he fit on the ringside stand? I forgot. I almost forgot. Yeah, he will. He's fitting there. Got to do a little bend to him, but he's fitting on the stand, no problem. So there you go. Uh, we'll see if the rest fit that way. But that's Gog Ho. Let's move on to the next one. All right, next up in this unboxing video, we got the G.I. Joe Red Ninja. Number eight in the line, a villain in the line. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the ninja part of G.I. Joe. Uh, maybe I'm different. You guys tell me in the comics. But as a kid growing up in the 80s, the ninja element of G.I. Joe really did nothing for me. Uh, I didn't go to G.I. Joe for the ninja aspect. You know, Snake Eyes was cool and all, but he wasn't even in my top five characters. Uh, I know the majority of G.I. Joe fans out there, Snake Eyes is probably number one, but it just didn't resonate with me as a little kid. I don't know why not. It just didn't. Uh, Storm Shadow, uh, Quick Kick, even Spirit was kind of involved in some of that ninja storylines. Uh, and then you had the Red Ninjas and stuff like that. And then way down the line, G.I. Joe, we had Ninja Force. Um, but none of that really did anything for me. Uh, I was always a Flint, Gung Ho, Roadblock, Duke, General Hawk. You know, I loved Law and Order and Mutt and Junkyard. Uh, tons of Joes I really liked out there. Even Dial Tones of the World. Um, but the Ninja aspect, it just didn't really uh, hit me where I was looking for my G.I. Joes. That being said, I did buy all of them as a kid. I'm going to buy all of them now. Uh, and this Red Ninja is an army builder. Uh, basically the second army builder we've had in the G.I. Joe line. Outside of the Cobra Trooper uh, Assault on Cobra Island Target exclusive, which is giving a lot of people some G.I. Joe anxiety out there. We talk a lot about turtle anxiety on the show, but the G.I. Joe anxiety Cobra Island is a real thing out there. I hope guys can find those Cobra Troopers. I hope we get some restocks. If not, they're rumored to be re-released in uh, traditional packaging in 2021. So we'll wait and see uh, what happens with that. But let's look at this Red Ninja first. So we got a ninja there. There he is. So a reimagining, uh, you know, I usually remember the Red Ninjas from the original show or the comics. Uh, also, the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe line, basically a repainted Storm Shadow in red. Um, but like I said, an army builder. So to me, uh, Cobra Troopers, I'd buy probably as many Cobra Troopers as I can find. I'd like to have uh, maybe two more. I have three open and one in box. I'd like to find at least one more, maybe two. Um, we'll see. Got, got some buddies we've got to try to help out too with that if I do come across one. But uh, these Red Ninjas, to me, I only need two, I think. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't anticipate this one to be as hard to find. We talked a little bit about Cobra Commander being three per case. Uh, he's only one per case, which I think is a miss there because people are going to want to army build this. Um, but it is what it is. But I do think since this will be available everywhere, Amazon, it's not an exclusive just to Target or something, we will find these Cobra Ninjas. You'll see a lot of them through the holidays. So I am definitely not sweating this one. Here's a funny story from my figure hunting videos. You guys might have saw this a few weeks back. I was uh, walking down the aisle at Target, and this has not happened to me in years. I walk into the aisle, and I see somebody grabbing this off the shelf and walking off to buy with it. So I missed it by a matter of seconds. Uh, that's the worst. I would have rather just known or had there and said, hey, this didn't exist. They didn't have anything. But to see somebody grabbing this off the shelf and taking it with them to the register, when you're after that, talk about a defeating feeling made me get out on the mission and out on the prowl trying to find him. However, I have not found the Red Ninja in stores. This one came in via Amazon as I did Amazon pre-order. 
Uh, hot tip for all you guys out there. Uh, whenever Hasbro or whoever does these pre-order videos uh, say, hey, they're going up for pre-order now, always pre-order on Amazon. Do it. Usually they're the cheapest price. They just don't always get things first. But what I do is I pre-order on Amazon. That way I got a safety net, or at least pretty close to a safety net, that I'm going to get the figure. And then if I find it in the stores later on, you can always cancel it. It takes one click to cancel the order. Or in the case of Red Ninjas, I would have, if I found one in the store, I would have kept it and I would have got one later date. Just a little tip there, but always pre-order because you never know what might happen. Get your pre-order in and you can adjust it down the line. But here is the Red Ninja. Red background like the other Cobras. A very dark picture down here. Uh, this one didn't really trip my trigger, like I said. We'll see. If maybe it'll be better in my hand. There's the file cards on the side. All that stuff you got to decode online. Number eight in the series. Eight in the series. There's the top, the bottom, and there's the dark. Very dark, menacing picture. Almost makes me think of the Red Ninja as a robot. He's got white eyes in this picture. Uh, you know, I, I know it's not a robot, but... And then there's the back. We've talked about the back enough. You guys all know my thoughts on that. Let's open up this ninja. Let's see what he's doing. And we'll see you later up high. Whoa, coming back at me almost. A little known fact, all these pick, all these toys I throw out there, I never clean them up. Behind the screen here is just mountains, like trash heaps of, of uh, carded figures. That's all it is. There he is in the plastic. Look at those accessories. A couple of axe-type things, a scythe, a, a big... Uh, I don't know, size like a young Raphael, a backpack, all kinds of stuff. Very cool. A lot of accessories with this one, as, as you'd expect any ninja. They always have everything. You never know what they're going to get into. They need all kinds of accessories. That's ninjas for you. Um, and that's the cool thing about having more than one of these. Having two or three, you display them with different uh, weapons. Hey, this is the guy that's the master of the size, and this guy's the axe guy, and whatever i mean there's a lot of ways you can go um, which i love but there's also a lot to unbox when you got tape and you got all these separate weapons get him out of here crunch crunch see you later all right the red ninja eh, not terribly loose get all the joints where we want them to be make sure everything's on the up and up oh yeah we're we're flagging good I'm sure we'll see this mold a few more times in our life. The Red Ninja. But all kinds of... He's got the holster on the side, holster on the back. That's outside of his backpack. Hole in the back for the backpack, of course. Uh, got a plastic kind of overlay vest on his shoulders and everything that I'm sure could come off if you popped the head and pulled and prodded and moved. Got a little uh, coat tails here on the back. Got the red and black. But a very cool figure. An army builder, like I said. He is there he is there he is let's see boy there's so many weapons with him it's unbelievable a little tape action and he's got little holes in here like a string would go through these axes i guess not because he doesn't come with one uh there's the big sword put that right down there holy cow he's got a lot of weapons I'm not even sure where everything is going to even end up going there's so much stuff maybe the sides are in the back uh, this is what you got to play around with uh, to figure out how you want to set him up. I guess there's no right or wrong answer as far as how you want to display him or put your stuff on him. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to mix and match and all that. I have noticed with these, the backpacks don't fit in as easy as the old school backpacks. Uh, you got to push a little bit and sometimes they'll still fall out on you, which is a little disappointing, but it is what it is. But there it is with kind of a, a quick addition of weapons on the Red Ninja. Uh, I gotta figure out how I want to display him and what I want to put on him. Let's see if uh, ringside stand, uh, ringside collectibles, just a simple stand, very cheap. Plug them all the time. Oh yeah, fitting in there like a glove. So there you go, ringside collectible stands fitting like a glove. Glove on the Joes. I do think I'll use the clear ones for Joes. I don't know. That's just the way my mind's saying right now. We'll see if that uh, sticks. But there it is, the Red Ninja. Not the most must-have figure in the line. I've I talked about my thoughts on ninjas with G.I. Joe, but a cool figure nonetheless. Uh, like I said, I will get at least two more, maybe three more, uh, as the days go by. But there it is. There is the Red Ninja. We got one left, and that is a heavy hitter that I'm probably the most excited to open up. Let's get to it right now. All right, we're finishing up the video with the one I'm the most excited about or was the most excited about. I love Destro. Something about that comic or the cartoon voice, uh, kind of the Sean Connery, basically. 
Uh, but Destro's cool. The man behind the mask. Uh, one of the most interesting villains in Cobra. Uh, and I love Destro. I love Destro when he had the Iron Grenaders. He broke off with his own world and team. Uh, very cool. And to get an early deep cut Destro. As you guys know in Series 1 we had the traditional silver mast Destro. Well, we got a different Destro. We got the Prophet Director Destro. Uh, which is a deep, deep De Destro cut. Was, we got this maybe in 93, possibly something like that. Uh, and then we later got him in the uh, convention exclusive, which we'll get to that. But uh, I would have loved to have seen the Iron Grenaders version before this version, but I'll take what I can get with Destro. Uh, a very cool figure by the looks of it in the package. Only one gripe, and we'll get to that as well. Uh, but I love the looks of this one in the package. I love the money, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this Destro was always known in uh, G.I. Joe circles as Pimp Daddy Destro. Obviously, they're not going to put that on a package. Uh, just because of his, you know, bold gold and crazy colors and like the cheetah leopard print uh, uh, collar thing, a uh, cape there he's got. Uh, a very cool Destro nonetheless. And, and speaking of it, I, I just mentioned it. Thought I'd bring this in for the video deep in the collection. 2007 G.I. Joe convention exclusive to go along with the 25th anniversary line. There is Destro, uh, this version of Destro basically, in the smaller 3 and 3 4 scale figure. I uh, love this line. Uh, you guys know I have uh, pretty much all of it. There's only a couple I'm missing, and that's my own fault uh, for being stubborn, not wanting to pay prices, and now the prices are out of control. But I uh, love this Destro. Uh, very cool. And look at the back. There's the back. Look at that file card. How can we not get a file card on these? Uh, just I love a good file card. I don't care what figure. Just some kind of a blurb. Tell me about it. Tell me something about Destro. But uh, this is a, a poor man's version of this. This thing is so upgraded. We're going to get into this. But I wanted to show this off to you guys uh, just so you could see it. But um, here it is, the Prophet Director. Uh, my gripe that I mentioned is right here, this comic book art. I do not like this comic book, book art at all. Uh, there's something about it I don't like. Reminds me of the Storm Shadow. It's probably the same artist. Uh, nothing against you, artist, but... I, I want a more gritty, not comic book, kind of kitty Destro look for my Destro. Um, but very similar to that Amazon exclusive Storm Shadow we unboxed uh, a few weeks back on the channel. There he is on the side with some glasses. There's the uh, file card stuff you get to code. Number 15 in the line. Now, all these Joes are numbered. Part of me feels like uh, I wish they would do what they do with the Star Wars uh, the store exclusives, uh, stuff like that, they wouldn't be numbered. They have like a little barcode thing to them, kind of separate them from the line. Because honestly, there's people that want to complete this that are going to have no chance of getting this. Uh, this is supposed to come out later in the year. I pre-ordered this from Hasbro Pulse. Um, and it's supposed to come in November, I believe it is. However, GameStop last week, these showed up on their website. I need two. I need an unbox one. I need one in my mid box collection. You ordered both of them. You got free shipping. They had a sale going on. I said, okay, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm going to get them both now. I can't wait any longer. I want this Destro. And that's what I did. Check your local GameStop. He might be sitting on the pegs. You may be able to order him online. But I do think this will be a deep cut that will be pretty valuable down the down the uh, line, uh, years from now, of course. Uh, so very cool. Um, the back, we're not going to talk about that. We've seen it before, but let's open this up. Let's get into this. Let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, a little different here. Let's, let's get this. See you later. Look at that Cobra logo. I'm going to save this. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but just different than that traditional red one we always get. Really cool colors on that. I didn't even notice that in the back of the picture. So I'm hanging on to that. I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll put it up somewhere, save it. I don't know. Uh, the little instruction book or whatever it is, we don't need that either. It didn't, didn't fly away, but we'll see you later. you got to say see you later or else it doesn't fly away. It just gets there and stuck. Let's look at this Destro. I didn't even realize the glasses were in here. Maybe I did, but I didn't see them. They, I didn't notice it in the package. Look at that. How cool is this figure? Now, this is one you don't have to have. It's not a traditional Destro. It's not a Destro that everybody knows about. This is kind of that nod to the past, a nod to the longtime Joe collectors out there. And it's very cool, uh, that's for sure. So let's get to the accessories. Look at this briefcase. We're going to look at those first. A nice gold briefcase. Let's see if this... I thought it opened up. Let's see. My luck, I'll break it. Maybe it doesn't open up. Nope, oh, it does. I thought so. So he's got kind of an old school. If you guys were an old school G.I. Joe fan in the early 80s, Destro came with a black 
uh, briefcase similar to this, had a little computer inside, stack, stacks of money, just fitting for Destro. Here we go, let's get this out, we'll get his cape, get all these pieces out here. Glasses, you gotta be careful with, you do not want broken glasses. See you later. Let's look at Destro by himself first. We showed the briefcase. We'll do the rest of the accessories later. Let's get the feet, get everything where we want it to be. He's got the uh, necklace, his traditional necklace. Uh, same as his other figure. It's on there. It's an extra piece. But there he is, gold Destro. Obviously a repaint of the traditional Destro we got. He's got his holder holster on the side, but uh, different colors. Got the red forearms, the kind of uh, purplish reddish, I don't even know, a maroon, I guess we would call it. Uh, then you got the cheetah print, leopard print, whatever it is, I believe leopard print, I guess, technically. Got the hole in the back, of course, the gold head on Destro, a very strong figure. I love the rockets on the wrist. Uh, they don't remove, they don't do anything, but that is a staple of Destro back in the day. He had those as a kid, you'd use your imagination. But let's dress him up. Let's look at this cape. I thought for some reason this was a soft goods cape. It is hard plastic, which I don't hate. I definitely don't hate that. Uh, soft goods sometimes, if you're displaying, they can get dusty. They can get, you know, snagged. They can kind of fade over time. Uh, these vinyl ones do not. So um, I don't hate that at all. Put that cape on him. Fits. It's a nice tight fit. You got to do a little work to get it on there. Uh, he does come with his gun, his pistol in gold this time. Stick that in the holster. Like so. Fits like a glove in the holster. Yeah, it does pop off a little bit. You got to kind of just get that cape in there just perfectly. <clears throat> but there it is. That is quite the cape. That is quite the cape. And then he comes with glasses, which is kind of funny. I don't, I don't know what's comical about that, but I guess the guy in a gold mask, silver mask, having uh, glasses on is is kind of comical. And there it is. Look at that. How awesome is this figure? And then this is a really nice touch. A nice piece. A nice extra. Look at that money. On fire. Cash on fire. Uh, that he holds there. So definitely going to be holding that in my, uh, in my shelf. That's for sure. Look at that Destro. Man, how far we've come in this G.I. Joe line. I just absolutely love it. Like I keep saying over and over. I don't know if he'll fit. Let's see. Yep. Fits on the Ringside Collectible stands. Go to Ringside Collectibles. Get your stands there. They're cheaper than the NECA stands and so forth. Uh, Ringside's not paying me to promote them. I've been buying them forever. You go to Ringside, buy some stands, tell them Kyle sent you. But uh, Destro, holy cow, a must-have for me. Maybe not for you guys since it is an ancillary, a deep cut in the Joe brand, but this is a must-have. i got to get every single Destro I see. Um, Hopefully next, like I said, we get the gold iron grenader edition. It would be just like this one. You get a nice little red half cape on him. Uh, use the gold, a little bit of a repaint to it, but a uh, uh, very, very cool. So there it is. There is our last real kind of official G.I. Joe line for 2020, it seems like. Uh, we got four months of really no Joes. We'll see uh, the Cobra Commander Hasbro Pulse exclusive, which will be out. So that will give us something. But uh, besides that, it should be pretty quiet for Joe's. I expect we'll see some restocks out there uh, to get us through 2021. Maybe they'll surprise us. I would love to see a G.I. Joe release right in December for the holidays. It would be maddening trying to get those, but more Joe's the better. Keep pumping them out. I want this line to grow. I want this line to succeed. I got to have more Joe's in my life, that is for sure. So you guys tell me what you think about these figures. Are you getting them all? Are you passing them all? Do you like them? Are you picking and choosing? Uh, are you passing on the Destro? You guys tell me in the comments. A lot of good Joe talk to be in here, that is for sure. Uh, I could talk Joes all day long. Um, but don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And for Destro, Gung Ho, Cobra Commander, uh, the Red Ninja, and all the other boys, this I'm Kyle, and I'm going to see you guys all real, real soon.